Richard is modeling good practice in Zoom by putting his hand up. It's very polite and I appreciate it. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I've got an actual hand up. <laughs> Richard, um, would you like to ask your question as you or would you like to type it and I can ask it for you? It's up to uh, you. I think I will ask it myself. That's OK. Um, yeah, th thanks, everyone. It was really interesting. Uh, I just had a sort of question as to in terms of the content creation that the students do. And I guess it's mainly for Ben, but happy to hear from anyone else as well. Um, uh, have you seen sort of trends in terms of the sorts of things they choose to do? Um, it, can you, you know, what, what are the most popular types of content creation now and maybe going back? You know, have you seen just interesting? Any... It's a really good question. I should actually do some more analysis of it. We could tally up sort of categories over the few years and I could get Chris to go back 20 years. I'm sure we'd see fewer YouTube videos being made uh, 20 years ago. And possibly by definition it didn't exist i can't remember when youtube did exist anyway um board games recur every year and i am considering asking chris to expressly forbid it because they're they're bad board games <laughs> Most, weren't an option when i did it well i don't know where if, i don't think it should be an option but uh, when, when they submit a nicely cut actually sometimes a not nicely colored in board with some dice to throw and say it's a mathematical game they'll practice adding up i try and give them an extremely low mark but because it's a very difficult thing to objectively mark and actually setting up criteria which cover all sorts of these things this is a problem uh so I, i'm kind of dodging your question by saying the things i don't like them doing but uh I think we will see more videos. We certainly saw a few videos being made of varying standards published in various ways, but that's quite a democratic thing now. YouTube, for better or for worse, has made it easier for people to share a sort of finished piece to a lot of people. And some of them can be excellent. Whether they receive the attention they deserve is another question entirely. But, um, and some people have, if they have coding skills create websites very well and the more interactive they make them the more sort of nicer product it is i would like to see more of in the future uh, things like desmos and jojibra classroom uh, so if they're trying to make something for students to interact with particularly in an online setting they could use these desmos and jojibra classrooms if you don't know about those things come next time and i'll demo those things i again i'm dodging the question of what trends i have seen because i don't really know the answer but i'm kind of freewheeling about what i'd like to see in the future in terms of master classes there's always one on cryptography there's there is always, always one on primes that. um i think the only time we've really had a topic that hasn't worked was last year when that particular group changed their minds on what topic they would do after we'd had all the conversations about their topic didn't tell anyone what they were doing rocked up to a year nine class and said to my colleague yeah we're doing it on primes great year nines don't know what prime numbers are do they so we'll start at the beginning and she just sort of went oh <laughs> okay um yes yes they do know what prime numbers are but that is in the entire time that i've been helping with the program which is when i started at the ri eight years ago we haven't had any that have completely fallen flat and, and not gone right so there's the topics that are really nice are where they've come up with their own um sort of interests and tied it in so the maths and music ones i love um the cryptography ones are always interesting there's also ones where they try and sort of make it like a like a game so like a cluedo theme or something where they have to solve lots of different things and bring it all together and they've tied in the maths with the sort of theme which is really nice it's always a themed one which is quite cool Sounds like more work than I've ever put into planning a masterclass session. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, there's I'd some great ones. That. They do, they it's do like an escape board. room that's a masterclass. Basically, so, yeah. To I go back to yeah. Richard's question, that the content creation is an interesting thing because it's such a varied possibility. And I think we have been a victim of that being too, too open. Uh, you can tell by my tone, I would like to see that a bit more constrained. Uh, but it's difficult to know what to constrain it to, which is why Richard's question is pertinent. We should, we should think pretty hard about that. Mm -hmm. we, we have a slightly different situation in that um, about half of the project work that the students do is defined by the mentoring relationships that, that right. they've ended up in. So, for instance, uh, if they're working with somebody who's developing a, um, an activity for a science festival, they will do they will develop that activity. And they the, some of those students end up working on quite sophisticated and um, they get involved at a very, um, I hesitate to say grown up, but um, you know, they're actually wrangling recalcitrant speakers and working out complicated details of who's going to be uh, Recalcitrant uh, speakers. And, 
and so forth. Of, of the ones that uh, of the ones that aren't like that, of the ones that are kind of they've got to develop it all from their own resources. Um, they're too wide ranging for there to be many trends, but one trend that sticks out is more podcasts. Mm, um, people have got point. a lot more interested in audio um over the past couple of years um it's it's relatively easy to work with you can do a good uh, a good convincing podcast more easily i think than you can do a good convincing video um yes. of most kinds so that's that's been the real change on the board game thing actually we, we do get the occasional board game one thing that's coming in the past few years is that you can now there are these websites which you send them the artwork and they will send you a professionally printed, properly cut and folded and stuck um, board game. So this thing arrives through the post and uh, you can, Elizabeth and Harriet, I know were, were uh, the program directors were paired as the markers on one of these things and they actually sat and played it through as a full game. They spent about 40 minutes on it and deemed it to be good as a playable experience. That's a relief. Mm. It can work. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have seen the odd really bad one. Um, uh, yeah, I know, I know where you're coming from on that, Dave. Fantastic. I think one thing is the technology as well, the access to technology. So back when I did the course, video wasn't suggested as an option, but then none of us had phones that could handle video. I mean, mm, you got yeah. the very little, little tiny screens with the really bad quality videos on. There was no way that could have been a, a genuine communication tool at that point in time. Well, in light of that, we're going to have to make some hard decisions on what we expect students to have tech tech wise um if we're going to ask them to make a video or even do a live stream ri masterclass they need a decent webcam they need a decent computer they need decent internet connection and these things suddenly are we, we had a discussion this morning about can we provide those things for students who want to take the course but don't have them and and how much training should we give them on video editing software or or zoom like the menu buttons in zoom these things have not been part of the course in the past should they now be part of the course or should we expect them to be sort of side learning that they just have to get up to speed to use? These are debates we are currently having. And I suspect Francesca will have to have when the course goes live. And if you're asking a group of students to deliver an online session that's live, then you get into a whole host of safeguarding questions as well. Yes. You know, how are you going to moderate all those? If you've got five groups of four students, how are you going to staff all those sessions if they're all supposed to be running at the same time to make sure that there aren't any issues? And yeah. I, I'm going to go in a couple of minutes. So if there are okay. any other questions. On the I, I have another question that we can throw yeah. to everyone. Oh, do, you, do you have a question, Francesca? No, no, you go first. Few. Okay, um, so I, I'm really interested in this idea that if you've got like lots of people doing different types of communication projects, which is fantastic because obviously people have their own interests and specialisms mm -hmm. and things that they're good at and uh, want to get involved in. Um, like, how do you develop like marking criteria for this? Like, because you're saying it's quite difficult to objectively mark a thing, but is there a way to have a sort of universal set of criteria that that are you know this is a first, this is a two one or whatever, um, and and how might you do that? The the conversation uh, I had with Tamsin and Chris this morning with the director of maths at Bath was to look at some of the marking criteria. Now, I can't answer this in full because I think we're going to be talking about it for months, but we've decided that, for example, to work along the lines of each component of this course to be split into planning, delivery and evaluation like it used to be. But this time they're not required to write up the delivery. So when they do the masterclass, they're not going to write what happened, because if it's online, we will attend and we will actually mark that live. And so similarly for the content creation, which I think is what you're asking about, Katie, is the it's the most varied bit. We're going to mark their write up of, of their planning, particularly their reflective sort of reasons for doing what they're doing in the way they're doing it. And that's going to be, I think, easier to write to set some criteria of what we're looking for in that write up. The rationale, the audience decisions, how they know it's going to be effective. How are they going to evaluate whether it's effective? That's all in the planning. And I think that'll be OK, even if it's wordy criteria. We're then going to mark the quality of content. We've put this highlighted in orange in my notes here because no one really knows. That's the bit we don't. No, I think you're asking about. But we have decided that if it's a group project, say they work together on a website, we would probably mark it as a group. We, how do you decide who did what page and whether to give them different marks? So I think that section is going to have to be some sort of objective criteria on how successful we feel the content is as a finished piece. If they're mm. handing a song, mm. 
I am going to judge its harmony harshly. <laughs> but I don't know what else we can do there. And, and uh, I agree, the criteria mm. are difficult. But then we also then get to mark, I think, with good criteria, the evaluation of that. So have they put into practice the, the evaluation strategies they've had? And crucially for me, I think this is the biggest reason to do the module, is have they reflected on trying something out, using it with an audience, and come back with observations on what went well and even better if. However cliche, cliche? cliche those phrases are it's the only way any of us get better at delivering a thing is make a thing how can they make it better and if so i feel like those criteria are going to be easy to come up with but the the content i haven't sorted out yet yeah i guess that's the best way to kind of assess this because you can't really expect a third year maths undergrad or a final year maths undergrad to be a seasoned presenter so if exactly. they do a presentation and it's not perfect you can't really judge them on that um, I guess, I mean, so in terms of the group work thing, because a lot of this will be group work by the nature of it, um, sometimes universities do things like have the people in the group themselves fill in a form that says we all put in an equal amount of work or here are the bits that I did and here are the bits that other people did. Um, and you can compare those and if they disagree, then you understand that uh -oh. there's someone who's not putting enough work and they've just lied on the form and everyone else was like, oh, they did nothing. Um, that Actually, might be a useful way to gauge that. I think that is a good point, and I'm going to put that in our notes now. The the one other thing I forgot to mention, which I would like to throw into the mix, is that we are considering having a Viva element after a delivery, where instead of all of it being written up, they as a group come and talk to us after their delivery and mm -hmm. tell us what they thought went well and even better if. And maybe we could include that meeting uh, as part of their evaluation and give them some marks for it. But we're still toying with that idea, and that might save some work and make it a little bit more immediate. In terms of evaluation um, it reminds yeah, so me slightly of um so i used to oversee a lot of uh, gold crest projects which is students but like top of school students doing a a project either individually or in a group and the different criteria for what they got for each thing is like this thing's your basic level this thing's your extended and mm. this thing's you know this is this is the highest level and obviously that's yeah. that's there in everything that is marked but it, I just remember it being really nicely and clearly laid out in those sorts of criteria and schemes. Yeah. Um, yeah, Lawrence has put in the chat that they're, they're called individual reflection forms, apparently. The, the one where you, um, you know, grass up everyone else who didn't put enough work in, uh, I believe, is the, the format. Um, I don't know if either of That's the other speakers... That's a Reddit thread, no? <laughs> I don't know. Um, the, if either of the other speakers have any thoughts on how you might go about kind of judging the quality of someone's outreach content if your um, practical element involves that kind of thing. I don't know if, if anyone has any more thoughts yeah, on that. Yeah, our, our experience has been almost exactly the same as Ben's. Um, so we find we can, we can robustly assess if they've done an evaluation exercise, uh, you can come up with good criteria that will pretty much generally work for that. We can assess, um, sometimes we make them do a journal um, where they document their planning for the thing and we find we, it's not too difficult to assess them on the quality of their forward planning. Are they anticipating the things they should be anticipating? All of that. And the other thing we do is we get them to write a, uh, an analytical commentary on what they've done. This is bearing in mind that most of the people who teach on this course have a humanities or a social science background. We are, um, we know we have some level of STEM background, but that's mostly what we work with. So we expect them to account for why they think the approach they've taken is the right approach or is a useful approach based on the existing prior literature of people who've done similar things or we expect them to say what kinds of ideas they're bringing together for the first time in this project um, and that again that's relatively easy to mark but um, we still have to assign quite a big component to the actual project itself um, otherwise it's not really a science communication project and that is um, we've got the same problems that Ben mentioned and we don't have any magical solutions to them I would say in answer to questions like if the exercise is to produce a song or a dance routine and the students got to their feet or they're tone deaf 
Um, no, you can't mark them down for that. You have to think about what this would translate to in the real world would, would be them producing that stuff, being the science consultant on that stuff, and then handing it over to a professional to do the relevant professional bit of the performance. So with, with that in mind, it would be, you know, if the, um, if the rhymes were terrible enough that the audience winced or if it didn't communicate anything interesting, it would be marked down. But um, if they came, came up with a good thing and did a sketchy run through of it, that could still be good work. Yeah, I mean, you'd sort of hope that if someone decides to do that kind of thing, it's because that's something they have a background in or an interest in. And that oh, they we always be hope. Completely terrible. But yeah, yeah, you never know. But yeah, I guess that's a good point, because if you are the sort of the science person coming out something like that, you won't necessarily be the only person working on something in a real world project. So, you know, it, it depends what you're kind of looking for. Um, Francesca, do you have any thoughts on this one? Or? Uh, so the actually assessment puzzles me a bit. Um, in fact, the um, in fact, I'm not looking forward to get to that point. Um, but um, that was actually um, one of the points that uh, was uh, one of the things that was uh, pointed out by the board of studies when I submitted the proposal. How can you make sure that you uh, assess this uh, course properly and um, that's one of the reasons why uh, well uh, only a 20 percent of the mark will be based on the material they produce and um, a bigger component will be based on their reflection uh, so their reflection and evaluation and uh, in the first there there's go also going to be some assessment in the first semester which will be a review of some pieces of uh, existing outreach based on literature. Um, so this is to like reduce the, the weight of the material they uh, on the material they produce. Um, something else which was uh, quite interested and I struggled with in writing the proposal was uh, should the mark be a group mark or individual mark because uh, obviously when you um, when you mark the material, the, then all the group would uh, get the same mark. Um, so um, it was decided then that the, uh, mark, the mark for the material itself would be a group mark, but all the rest would be um, individual mark. So, um, so people who reflect more would have a higher mark than others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think that's also, yeah, it's quite a good point that, you know, them being exposed to existing material and looking at, you know, projects that other people have done is quite a good way for them to learn, you know, like, there's only so much you can learn through your own practice if you've not done very much, you know, and kind of, yeah, that they're, they're like marking their observations of other people's practice and what's what's good about it and what's bad about it is probably just as useful as to some extent as, as the stuff they're doing themselves. Yeah. Um, cool. Do we have any more questions? I'm sort of accidentally running the Q and A, even this was this was Sam's thing. Sam's just shrugging. Sam doesn't care. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any things to come in on or any. There questions are. I'm busy or... thinking about answers to questions, so it's fine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh... Actually, Sam. Okay, since Ben is not here, <laughs> I'll ask you because you have <laughs> you have taken the course. Um, how um, was there? Was it entirely practical or was there any literature behind that? Um, so when I did it, obviously it's changed a lot since then. It was what, 11, 11 years ago or whatever. Um, but I'm also a sort of guest lecturer on it every year. I come and train them on how to do a masterclass and show them examples of different mm -hmm. ideas and, and topics and things like that. Um, there is always a background element to it so your your analysis of what you're doing you should ground it you've done some research and you've looked at what works in this sort of situation and what doesn't and things like that how academic that gets in terms of what sort of journals they're looking at or whether they've just gone to an organ like the ri's website and said oh yes masterclasses are to do this um varies between the students and i don't know how much of a, a waiting crisp puts on that or Chris Ben and Tamsin now put on that um, certainly I did a, a lot um, all the evalu the the sort of main focus was you are assessed on your evaluation of what you've done 
so it's reminding the students very carefully that you know you you have to evaluate this so you have to find ways of collecting that information to be able to evaluate your own work so the ones that do it well build that into what they're doing and think right we're going to have to get some feedback from the students we're going to get some feedback from um in the masterclass context the teachers that are there to help out things like that when they're doing a stall for a science show maybe it's a school group but maybe it's a family groups that are coming depends what day of the the um fair they go to how are they going to collect feedback from that and things like that so there's there's that um element to it and it's how they've looked at what information they've got and how they've analyzed that and, and reflected on their own practice and i don't think you can do that completely in isolation you have to look at the literature you've got access to and embed you know this thing is a good thing and here's where it's shown that it's worked and stuff like that and look at things like um oh all the relevant research has gone completely out my head science capital research and, and things like that is is really important to look at to be able to embed what you're writing in you know the context does that answer your question Cool. Um, so we, we have we increasingly have an anonymous questions as well. Few, oh, we have an anonymous question. We do. Um, um, someone has asked, yeah. is there a danger in these courses where students are actually being assessed that some will be excellent maths communicators and could be put off by a bad experience or bad mark? Hmm. Hmm. Which is a so, very good question. Yeah, so kind of doing a doing a, a project as part of this, but it not going well and yeah. being assessed on it, putting them off. Particularly group projects, it's very much who you're in a group with, isn't it? I mean, if you, you're in a group with some really awful people, that's going to put you off. Um, mm. Mm. Well, I've had an experience of that. Uh, I mean, the students who come to us for a full-blown master's programme, of course, have a lot invested in it to begin mm -hmm. with. And they have generally found enough to their liking on the course that um, that hasn't been an issue. I know with the bath one, because there was a variety of things you were doing, particularly where you've got the free choice thing so you, you're doing a master class and you're doing a stall for a thing and you're, you're doing something else and you're making a permanent piece and obviously that's changing to sort of technically look at, at different things and what works and what doesn't work and, and whatever changes are being put in place but it seems like there's still a variety of stuff there hopefully if one thing really puts you off there will be enough other things in there that you've enjoyed or that have gone well, or maybe, maybe you have got a bad mark, but you can look at it and go, Oh, you know what? That's what I did wrong. Mm. Well, yeah, I think one of the things about kind of doing certainly public presenting is that you will always find that you are not happy with how it went. Like whatever happens, you'll come off thinking, Oh, I should have done this and I did that wrong. And you, it's kind of a constant, process of improvement and as long as that's communicated mm -hmm. to you as part of the training then mm -hmm. I guess you'll you'll be okay with that um, and I think Ben was saying also that they work in different groups yes they're not with the same group for every single project so it might be if there is a couple of people that are uh, not easy to work with that you maybe avoid them for some of the stuff that you're doing so yeah. potentially that yeah and particularly as a lot of it's on your own sort of evaluation and things like that so mm -hmm. so maybe you've you've got a way of sort of focusing on what your bits of it but also if it's the evaluation bit you really don't like well you find a job that doesn't involve much evaluation mm. like uh, being an explainer in a museum or something like that you're yeah. really asked to critically evaluate your <laughs> being a freelancer there is almost no feedback uh, like i don't get like a line manager who gives me an annual review i had to apply for and win a national science communication award in order to find out whether or not i was any good at my job um <laughs> that's a joke um but yeah the the thing i was gonna uh, maybe ask i don't know if this is a question but we've had we've had quite a few people disappear off but kind of how many other universities are offering a communication specific module um because i know we did a bit of googling in order to kind of invite speakers for this um but there is uh, i think university of kent has a module and we spoke to someone who runs that and they said it's kind of just presentation skills really like there's not much of interest to say um and I, you know i'd have been happy to hear about it but that's fine um i think university of middlesex university of leicester and queen mary all have 
um, maths communication type modules within their uh, maths degrees. So it's not completely rare. I think we were talking about developing one at Sheffield Hallam. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a discussion that we were having about, you know, that there is enough, enough interest in this. And I think a lot of people who do a maths degree are maybe thinking about maybe teaching or perhaps are aware that they're going to have to be able to communicate with people. Um, and I think there was, I think there's a certainly one module or part of a module in my undergrad at Manchester that was sort of a presentation skills uh, thing, but I didn't take it. So <laughs> who's to say <laughs> this is now my job? Uh, who's to say whether or not that was uh, necessary or useful? But yeah, I think it's, it's part of that sort of soft skills push that people want to make sure that people have you know, slightly broader interests than just being able to write down numbers. Um, but yeah, whether these things are focused on that sort of level of just a basic kind of how to do presentations thing, or whether they're actually aimed at people who are thinking about science communication as a career, um, I guess depends on the course, doesn't it? Yeah, there's also, good, there's always going to be issues, and connecting slightly back to the last question as well, as the difficulties some people will have compared to others in the fact that something is being judged and assessed and, and things like that. So but as well, if you get any feedback on something, you you are in a way being judged and assessed. Um, so while I'd spend my Saturdays in normal times going around to masterclasses and quite a number of the speakers are worried that I'm there to judge their quality compared to I'm there to support the organisers and make sure they're doing all the things they're doing and not leaving children alone with people they shouldn't be left alone with and, and things like that and, <laughs> and, and there as general support um, and to help out and stuff and, and it's, it's as, as if you're running a course like this or even if you're just supporting people that are doing these sorts of things for the first time it's always worth keeping in mind that to emphasize that you're there for support and, and training and no one does it right the first time and mm. don't don't expect perfection yeah it's, it's about putting it in context isn't it you know mm. you're not going to come out of this as a number file presenter but you might come out of this you know slightly more experienced and aware of what the possibilities are i guess yeah actually so um if i can add when i run the focus group with students one of their main fears was not the idea of being uh just or uh finding finding a group they didn't want to work with their main fear was to um have to write an essay <laughs> which and uh, which they never do as, the, as a math student. So that's mm. why in the end uh, we decided to split the assessment and give something like, can't remember, 25% to the reflective essay and have a kind of literature review uh, with no much weight in the first semester so that they would have some experience of writing an essay before. Mm. That's fantastic. Yeah, it, it is interesting how it's, it's sort of a cliche that maths people don't like writing long, long passages of text. But I mean, we do write papers, right? If you do research, you do have to write it up for a paper. So presumably that involves some writing, I guess. I don't know. There's writing and writing. There is, yeah. I, I would not single out mathematicians. Um, there is quite widely across the STEM fields, there is a horror of being asked to actually write among, I would say a majority of students. Whereas there are some who love it and they say, oh, finally I get to write something. Something that people can follow. Something I loved both in, both in the communication course at Bath, but also in the, the science communication MSc I did after that was looking at all the research and all the all the sort of context of it and things like that and I found that fascinating and that's part of the reason when I wrote up my project that it was so long compared to everyone else's and I do mean everyone else's um, because I got a bit excited in here's all the research and here's all what it says and this is what we're trying to do and and trying to tie them all together. I guess they were very happy when it came to markets. <laughs> Well, as I say, strangely, the next year there was suddenly a page limit. So I'm, I'm <laughs> taking that as, <laughs> as mysterious. And <laughs> yeah. um, that has just reminded me, actually, this is something I probably should have mentioned earlier when everyone was on, but we can put it in the email about the next session as well. Um, there was sort of maybe chat of putting together some kind of uh, journal club, um, which I guess would look at papers from the field of science communication research. Um, that would be great. 
yeah, kind of announce which paper we're going to be discussing this month or whatever, and then arrange a Zoom call where we come in and have having looked through it, have a chat about what it says and uh, the implications for how we should be doing communication. Um, and I think if people are interested in that, it's something that we'll probably sort of run through TMIP as a, a side side thing. So I'll put the details of that in an email out to. Um, I guess the mailing list for this would maybe be interested and the, the general team at mailing list as well. Um, and we'll put that out on Twitter as well, but it will probably be run as basically just a Google doc that you can come in and edit and make suggestions for future papers to look at and then arrange a date and time to meet up. So. And they'll have be... to be um, accessible by those of us who are not based in the university. Yes. Uh, so we'll, we'll find uh, papers that are open access or find some way for people to be able to read the papers. Um, or excerpts from the papers if necessary. Um, but I will uh, look into that and, and figure something out. Um, but yeah, I think that is probably now half past five. It um, is indeed half so, past five. Uh, I'd like to thank again our speakers uh, for coming and telling us about the stuff they've been doing. Um, and thanks to the other team of organisers as well for all of your wonderful work and efforts in helping make this happen. Um, and hopefully we'll see some people on the 29th of October for the next one.